Hello there, Dr. Eagles here with Global Ed, and we are about to embark upon another training that involves learning to plan, do, and review. Additionally, how to become an active listener. So let's join our group as we discover ways to improve our professional development. Let's get started for the day. And I just wanted to let you know, first of all, welcome. And I'm very excited to be here with you and your team and really focusing on today's um, topic, which has to do with listening and how to explore options of listening in the classroom and preparing different activities for students. Um, and, um, you know, we're trying to work within this hybrid community um, for some, you know, we're finding out you're not quite back in school. And um, so it's, it's a difficult time really to concentrate on um, making sure that you have certain activities that are really relevant for you and your, your virtual type classroom or remote learning. But we're going to move forward on giving you new skills and new opportunities of learning new skills. Um, the, second the second part of what we will be learning and discussing today and training you on has to do with do, I'm sorry, plan, do, and review. And um, we're going to learn some new skills on how to do this effectively. So I'll go ahead and get my screen share going so we can go ahead and get started. I did want to share with everyone that um, I will record these. Um, I'll have videos available for you. I know um, Michelle mentioned last week that um, there was a question about whether or not um, you can get a copy of the PowerPoint. I don't have a copy of um, the PowerPoint that I do provide, but I will provide the information and the video that does have all of the information that you'll need on, um, you know, on, on the video. So we're going to get started, um, change up a little bit uh, with the the order specifically today, I want to start with, um, instead of specifically the listening portion, I want us to start with um, this plan, do, review in action. And I'm really excited about this um, this opportunity to share some real um, activities that you can put into progress. And even if you're not, as, as we we're learning, that you're not physically back in the classroom, this is a great opportunity for you to start preparing some of these some of these projects and some of the tools. So when you are back into the classroom, you'll be able to implement these as well. So I'm going to quickly run through and give you a preview um, of what we what you can expect. Of course, first, again, um, you're going to learn about how to plan how to do, and then how to review. And uh, we're gonna go over this as an overview for you. So if you wanna jot down some of the um, key points that you'll be learning in this first half of our training today, is um, number one, we'll be learning about um, developing and um, you know this overall function of what this really means to you in developing um, this plan of allowing students to learn and to plan a strategy. The second part that we will be learning is um, plan, do, and we'll go over this overview. We're gonna go through um, some aspects of planning time, and then of course, planning some activities planning time with diverse development levels. That's always um, an important issue, especially in your community where you have multiple classroom um, levels in your, in your classes. So we wanna make sure that we address that, um, that you'll have some, some, some new tools to kind of level up from the preschool level that you can just add on as um, a learning tool and um, you know, 
as the, the scaffolding up from kindergarten and then add some new elements for perhaps first grade, second grade, and third grade. But primarily today we're gonna be, we'll be working on preschool and um, kindergarten. It um, also will be talking about work time and what does what that means. Cleanup time, always important. Recall, and then um, making sure that um, we have a good review of of what that means. So. Um, while we're giving you this information, I want to make sure that you're jotting down and you're you're making notes um, that will be covered um, today in today's session. There will be um, a video that I'll be showing as well. Um, first, I want to point out that we're going to work on establishing and um, goals. So in your classroom and even in you know the remote style of learning, if you can't actually utilize these, these new tools and these new um, activities, you can start developing those and have the students start developing those as well. So when you're back in the classroom, you can put all of this into action. So within these goals, there are um, four areas that we're gonna concentrate on. Um, the visibility of games and, um, you know, 21st century learning is very, um, aware of the importance of using games as learning tools and also using the classroom as a classroom tour. And so the idea of this is the students are able to plan certain activities in a certain strategy that they'll be using. Next, we're gonna discuss um, different props that you'll be able to use and engage upon in the classroom for the students to become aware of and preparing them for this um, better listening and developing these listening skills. Um, next, we're gonna talk about how, we, how important it is to set up these partnerships with our students in class, small groups, uh, making sure that teachers sometimes partner with students. Um, you know, I, I think it's very exciting sometimes when students feel like they're so special when they are partner partnering with their um, teacher. So that's always something where they feel like they're extra special. So we're going to talk about that. Also, um, group games and then um, representation. So these are the main elements that we will be um, discovering today as our goals. Um, I'm just going to run through this quickly so you'll have some um, ideas of what you're going to expect. Um, plan time is something very, very important. This is a tool that you'll be able to establish now with your students, even though you're not face to face in the classroom, but you can start teaching them how to become um, strategists in planning and conducting and sharing their time, work time and then recall time, making sure that these elements are in place. Um, we wanna also discuss the opportunity of um, active learning in real time, okay? So right now in the remote learning situation um, where you're not really face-to-face, -face, you're not gonna be able to really get down with the kids and um, express yeah. some of the play times that um, you often get to do that, but we're gonna give you some skills to um, share with um, when you do get that. Next one is um, giving individuals, um, students a choice and um, making and creating new ideas. So we need to find out how to engage in planning and listening skills that um, help students to really gain control of making choices and also just really being able to reflect on the choices that they've made. Also within this area um, in communicating back and forth with one, other, one another, listening to each other, um, this is opportunity for students to gain experience about how to plan and respond, being responsible. As we talked about last week, as Michelle went over with all of us, we talked about um, the elements of being responsible. So again, we want to um, reiterate that um, there's this um, planning time is that's what we're going to put together 
our plan for our students, where you're going to empower students to make a plan and show them how to do that. And then of course, the work time, that is the element of where you're actually doing and participating in whatever project. And then finally, making sure that you have this recall time to review what has been learned. So these are key elements that I want you to make sure that um, you're implementing. So plan, do, and review. Um, we're gonna talk about re recall time and sp spending that 10 to 15 minutes, uh, making sure that that's in your schedule to um, recall what, what they've learned, what they've done, how they've experienced it. Um, developing a strong work plan, engaging in these small groups, promoting um, decisions and allowing students to be responsible for that work time as they become doers. And um, not sitting on the, on the, on the sidelines, but um, really being um, present in the classroom and being um, able to be, you know, uh, having the ability to recognize what they're doing and why they're doing it. Um, you're going to also learn to create a sequence chart, and um, we will. I'll show you a couple of ways that you can engage in um, putting together some of these uh, props, as we were discussing earlier in the goals, um, putting together certain chart, um, using this chart, um, it's kind of like a wheel chart, like um, I was thinking about like the, um, is it the price is oh. right wheel or whatever, the wheel of fortune, I guess, where uh, having that kind of chart where you can actually develop this along with your students and um, engaging on ways for them to ask questions and for you to ask questions. Um, these questions are so important. Make sure um, this portion has to do with how students listen. Um, we need to make sure that you're always engaging in um, when you're asking a question, leave it open-ended. You want to engage and get the responses back from students. Plan to plan. You have to make sure that um, students um, need to become aware that in order to have this progression of learning, there, they have to engage in, in making a plan. And I love this element of being able to make these students responsible for, A, we have this work time again, and making sure that you are reiterating this with them, that work time is the time when we're doing. Recall time is when we're reviewing, making sure we're, we know what we're learning. Now, I was talking about these props that we were using in class. This is like um, developing some of these um, DIY, do-it-yourself type pro um, projects and um, developing your classroom tools. And so we're gonna learn about some real activities that are really fun, but also practical um, ways, as you can see, the ingredients of making your own timer. Um, Simple, simple solutions, ingredients that's something that students can make while they're at home and prepare to bring it back to school. Um, this is a great activity for you to get them in that mode of learning how to plan and making a schedule. So with that, you just need two small like water bottles, empty water bottles, and you need some sand and some tape or some glue, and you put them together at both ends and you tie or glue together, and then you put sand in the other, and then you use that as the timer. It's a wonderful tool to be able to use with the, with the students, and then they are able to make it themselves. And so they know what it's for from beginning to the end and what it's used for. Um, also, it's important to be able to identify work areas in the classroom or even at home, you know, in this virtual or remote learning environment, we need to make sure that we are identifying um, what the work areas are 
and what work groups are. Now, I know that um, there's not a lot of socializing unless there are students that have siblings in the household or whatever that can work maybe together as teams. But um, the, the process right now in the remote learning environment is that you're starting to program the students to make sure that they are learning these skills of what it truly means to work in a group, have a teammate. And then also the other area that we're going to be working on today is making sure that um, you're making a teaching blocks map. And this is another fun activity that you're going to learn about today. Um, this is an example of what you can use and we're just simply put together um, this activity as um, a developing a workstation block area. And this goes back to, I think it's Ms. Johnson and that we're, we're just uh, wonderful, understanding that wonderful um, stations that she had laid out throughout um, that she used, I believe as Ms. Johnson always could get a little confused. So excuse me if it's the wrong person, but using those workstations, this is the same idea of being able to do this, but you can do this on a smaller scale. Whereas you can see, you can just, um, you can use it as simple as a piece of paper or whatever device that you might have. You can see that this is just used with masking tape and then maybe color coding the different areas that you might have in your classroom. So they would be um, individualized to, to, to mirror whatever your classroom is, or they can do the same activity in their workstation in block stations at home. So you can have this as another activity that you can also use in the classroom. Recall, make recall a, pro, a group progress process. So you want to make sure when you're in the classroom that you can do this as an activity. So as a team or a few students can gather together and discuss what they have learned and recall what um, activities they have encountered. As you can see here, um, this is a simple chart that the teacher has made. And this is where she's used her different blocks of her stations in class. And then the, she's using this as a way for the students to identify what they've done and what that experience was like. And so we'll get into this a little bit more so you can understand what that process is. Allow enough time for planning. Remember that your planning is not just the teacher planning. That's gonna be two steps. First, of course, you as the instructor, you have to make a plan to make sure when the students are going to get together for their own individual plan. So allow enough time for planning for the students, okay? And then um, this is another station that we're looking at as far as this idea. I love this other, this quick idea of being able to use plastic or paper cups. And then you're just labeling those cups with the different stations that the students uh, may have visited or how they plan to um, work in these particular stations. So you're setting the students up to engage in this process of what they're going to do first, second, third, and then of course come back. And they're using these little props um, as the virtual cup station. So these are activities, even that you're not in the classroom, these might be some simple activities that you can um, put into place for your students that are still at home and they can prepare these and, and understand what that's all about. Next, um, what is the developmental level? We talked about that important element um, of these multi-level classrooms that you have, multi-grade, um, level um, levels in the classroom, you need to make sure that you're aware of which level that student is. So not to um, give them, you know, overextend where they are. What is the strategy? We need to make sure that they understand that a plan is a strategy. It builds responsibility. It helps to engage in teaching students how to listen. If we can make a plan, and execute the plan and then follow up on it, 
it gives us a really wonderful plan to connect your planning strategy to your child's plan, okay? So right now, this is all about them. Now, I love this area. As you can see, this is a simple um, die dice a pair oh, it's one uh, one die of a pair of dice and this is another prop that um, that we'll be able to use as well into the classroom as far um, we'll, we'll get into that a, a little later but I just wanted you to see that um, here at the the group discussion and this is going to be a great way to develop um, this as far as asking questions and being responsible to follow up on how many questions you have to answer or much information, how much information you have to give depending on the role of the dice. Um, this other area is um, another opportunity of planning around the train. So as you can see, um, if you in your classroom might have a train set or something that is, um, you know, just one of a, a prop or a toy or an activity, but um, this strategy is where they have put their blocks of discussion using this around the train track as far as, of course, around and around it goes. And then as it lands, um, you just, are pointing out and having a discussion of where you went on your plan or where you're planning to go and um, to and what the outcomes will be from that. So this is just another idea of a learning type tool that um, you can use in the classroom. This one I love as well, as far as um, planning on the road, I call it. As you can see, this is something fun where if you have a car or a truck or something like that, you can see that this is made into like a roadway um, system. So you can label each one of these are destinations again in your um, classroom of where those stations the students will go to learn. So as you can see, um, this student is explaining his plan of where he's going to go first, maybe then drive down the next road to the next plan and then so far. I love this, this opportunity because it's so interactive and creative for students to see ways to building a, a plan. Now, even though this is specifically geared towards um, having these workstations in the classroom and planning where they're going to go, you can also use these same strategies and tools for other learning um, endeavors as well, whether it's math or English, et cetera. And then you can, um, of course, put words, spelling, et cetera, in, in those as planning tools. Work time, remember, it is time to do. So you want to make sure that you are expressing that to the students. Again, ask questions, invite each child to share what he or she wants to do. So first of all, you're giving them the opportunity to um, plan and be creative and to do what they like. Maybe they want to set up um, what they like to do best first um, maybe they're going to leave the third option to something that they don't like so much, but it's giving them, um, empowering them to make these decisions. And again, um, a plan must include all of these elements. Um, remember the gaming, the tours. So we talk about these tours. The tours are what they're taking in the classroom, going to the different stations that you've assigned or set up. You also need to establish props, partnership group games and representations. Um, group games, of course, we are all kind of familiar with that as simple as Simon says, um, you can change those up, making songs, et cetera. Um, we are learning, of course, about these partnerships are very important. You might, depending on your class size, you can have partnerships of um, two or more, um, three or more. Um, it's always good to have, um, you know, maybe, um, e uneven um, numbers um, 
groups of three, five, you know, et cetera, seem to work best. Um, also, um, representations. Let's just quickly go over what that really means. Uh, we talked about last week about the importance of 21st century learning in using symbols and logos. These are what we call representation type of activities. And we engage in using these with symbols, um, writing, using photos, drawing, talking, you can use music. Um, so all of these different tools that you can use to build on additional activities. Um, encourage students to discuss their plan. And then finally, you know, you're going to get back to the same group um, wherever, once the students have been out on their way of um, whatever they planned and to walk through that particular assignment, you're going to make sure at the end of that follow-up, you're going to have that time for recall. Remember that Children's planning skills will move from the simple to the more complex. So that's always our goal in building these blocks. Remember, join in, participate. Even if a student has, um, you know, they're, they're kind of in their own little area, maybe there's one or two people um, at a group or an activity, you know, make sure as the educator, the teacher, you kind of pop in and uh, participate and um, make sure that you're playing with our kids, with kids as well. Kids can create a strategy. That's what we're doing here. In that, they are developing these cognitive skills. Um, you're teaching them how to share, develop new ideas, new concepts, to think out the planning. And um, it really helps to support their interests. So it gives them an opportunity to learn as they're, they're growing. And um, this particular opportunity here is as she's having this wonderful creative um, session, um, we have to make sure that we're allowing students to choose different type of tools that they want to use. Um, and you'll see a little bit um, in a few moments about what that means as far as developing um, these tools and giving them the option to make the choice. Working with um, this toss the, and the, the dice that I um, talked about earlier. Um, remember, you're throwing the dice and then you're going to ask, where, um, where did you go today? What did you do today? You know, and working with these props. So when we're throwing these um, and rolling the dice and you're getting a certain number, if they, you know, if they just roll on a one, maybe they just have one question to answer. If they roll on a three, they might have to talk about three or, you know, two questions. Um, again, developing these learning tools and, um, you know, just simple games. Um, the game, learning with dice, roll the dice. The number you select, um, it decides how uh, much to share, where you'll go. First, I'm going to go here. Then I'm going to go there. Next, I'm going to go here. And that's what you want the students to actually plan. Um, this is that idea that I mentioned earlier about this planning will. I love this idea. Um, this is something that students can do at home um, and then also prepare them to have this as they're working in the classroom. As you can see, it's just kind of like that wheel of fortune will, but in this, you're going to put the stations that are going to be in your classroom. And then you indicate these particular um, stations on to the, the spinning wheel. And as you can see, maybe you can't see too clearly here, but this is just a simple clothespin. And so the student just brings the clothespin and decides these are the different stations that I will be going to. This is my plan. I think that's a wonderful opportunity. And then again, again recall, five, 10 minutes of recall time. What did you do? Let's explain that. When we're going through this with our students and they're sharing and recalling, remember, don't rush them. Let them think about it. Let them create, um, but make sure they do share a little bit. Observe and recall what you see um, with this recall session. Make sure that you are listening. Make sure that the students are listening. Observe and listen to children as they play. It's okay to play. Remember, um, 
as educators, I think that's one of the most fun things when we can really get in there and engage with our students, um, become a partner with them, um, let students solve their problems, make sure that um, you involve students in solving problems with materials and space um, constraints. So if in fact something is not working for a student, um, you are going to help them walk through making this um, better, a better opportunity for them. So problem solving is very key in this. Now, in conclusion, um, when you are developing certain work time spaces, um, as you can see, you know, it says 14, I'm sorry, 45 minutes to about 60. That might be a little long stretch, I think. Um, I'm thinking more 45 minutes for these particular stations, maybe 30 to 45 minutes. But um, what you're doing at these, for example, in this particular station, um, they are identifying shapes and different sizes. And so um, make sure that um, at, when they're at these stations, they're going to identify the shape, you know, round, rectangle, or square. So that's kind of what we're doing. And so as we're learning here, plan, do, review, in action. So now I have a short video clip that um, I think you'll all enjoy. I think it's very, um, important that um, we get to see these visuals as well, just like our own students in the classroom. I think it's important for us to um, have diversity in how we're learning. So um, give us just a moment here and we're going to take it away. This program illustrates the plan, do, review process, a critical and unique part of the curriculum that builds on children's interests and intrinsic motivation. The first part of this program provides an overview of plan, do, review. The remainder of the program illustrates the three components that make up this process. Be a horsey and make a house? What kind of a house does a horsey live in? A barn. Teachers using the high scope curriculum involve preschoolers in a variety of active learning opportunities throughout the daily routine. I'm going to use the block to make a barn. So I'll find you in the block area if I want to see you as a horse. All right, go get started. Thinking over here is close to the block area and it's close to the food. Do you think that would work? During plan, do, review, children see that they can make things happen and that their choices and ideas are respected. This helps children develop self-confidence and a sense of control and independence. In the plan, do, review process, children make plans, carry them out, and reflect on what they've done. In doing so, children learn to take initiative, solve problems, work with others, and accomplish their goals. Look at your stall! As children gain experience with plan, do, review, their language becomes increasingly detailed and complex. What do we have to do to take care of a horse? You look in the horse book. I looked in the, I can look in the horse book and see? Yep. Their vocabularies grow as they convey what they are learning and they become confident communicators. Which horse are you? Which horse are you? So you're the brown horse with and the I'm black the white tail? Horse. And you're the you're a, the white horse with the white tail in the mane? Yeah. Generally over an hour in length, this three part sequence of plan, do, review is devoted to planning time, work time, and recall time. All those kids, you were there, and Mingan was there, and Cameron was there, and what were you doing with all those kids? And I remember you were an animal. What kind of animal were you? A horse. Okay, you could go put that block away, Ella. Triangles. And mine. 
I, yours might be in here next. Let's find out what Meredith's going to do today. At planning time, children meet in small groups with an adult. You and Mingan are going to play in the water table today. Each child then decides what to do during work time, what area to play in, what materials to use, and who else will be involved. When you talk to Mingan about the water table, what are you going to talk to him? What will you use? At work time, the do component of the three-part sequence, children carry out their plans alone and or with others, and then clean up. They access materials, use them, and put them away in labeled storage areas. Wow, you are really busy with all of the babies. Ladies and gentlemen, let's find out what Mingan did today. I play with the animals. At recall time, the last of the three-part sequence, children meet again with their planning time group to share and discuss what they did and learned during work time. Well, let's think about the areas that you went to. How many clips do I have? Three. Three. You could take the first clip and show me the first place you went. The segments of plan, do, review always occur in the same order, and the entire sequence occurs at the same time each day. Full day programs may schedule the sequence to occur twice each day. I saw you over there. What were you doing there? You were... I was there. Do you remember what computer you used? The value of plan, do, review is supported by research that shows that children's play becomes more purposeful and focused when they use this process. You're on the computers, you're on computer number one. Here, what was the second area you went to? You can turn the timer over and plan while that sand is going down. Let's let's see what Ella's gonna do today. I'm gonna play with the computer. I wonder which computer you're gonna go on. Planning time begins the plan do review process and takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Do you have a plan after you're done on the computers, Ella? No. Not yet. No. When young children plan, they begin with an intention or an idea. I'm going to uh, play doggy with Mingan. You're going to, so I wonder. Me too. You're going to do that too, Mingan? So yeah. I wonder who's going to be the dog. Intentionality is what makes planning different from simply making a choice. The owner. You're going to be the owner. When planning, children develop specific ideas about what they want to do, how they will do it, and with whom they will do it. Uh, in the house there, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, book area. The house area and the book area? So what do you need to be a dog and an owner, Megan? David, what are you going to play with today? Depending on their age and ability to communicate, children might express their plan in actions. Is that what? Go show me. Such as picking up a block, gestures such as pointing to the block area. You're going to play with the cardboard blocks today, David? Okay. Let's see. What do you think you'll do with these blocks? You're going to make something with the blocks? or words. So you want to go to the block area too. We can write your name so I can read that it says Jameer in the block area. So I'll find you in the block area. What are you going to play with when you go to the block area? The dinosaurs and the blocks? Let's look at how you can support children at planning time. First, divide children into small groups, each with its own adult. The membership of each group should remain consistent, so adults get to know and follow the growth of each child, and children get to know one another. Well, this was for your name, Amaya. I saw the letter A. A is for uh, 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 Amaya. Um, I wonder where you're going to put that to work. I'm going to work in a block area to build a rocket ship to, again. To build a rocket I ship? Well, I wonder if you have an A in your name. I mean, I'm going to go to the book area to play number one computer. You want to play on that first computer? And then, Amaya, come back. I heard you say you wanted to build a rocket ship. Invite each child to share what he or she wants to do during work time by asking what questions. And then what are you going to use to build your rocket ship? Um, blocks. I wonder what size blocks. 
The big blocks. The big blocks? Okay. You're going to be what? Platypuses. Platypuses. What will you do in the house area? Remember that planning is an individual process. So swim around in the tank. How do people know that you're going to be a platypus? Each child is asked to share his or her own plan. After listening to the child's plan, make follow-up comments or questions to elicit more detail and encourage more thinking. If you want to play pat platypus, you can still play platypus. But I was wondering, at greeting time, you were talking about the tail and how you can make a tail. Paper tail, you could do that. So where would you have to go to make a paper tail? So you need another marble. Yeah, I'm wondering about while we're at work time, what you would like to do. Would you still like to For children who are reluctant to plan, be sensitive to figuring out why. Talk about what might make the child reluctant to plan and problem solve together to overcome any barriers to planning. Do you think we could walk around the classroom and look at the different choices? That, that might help. See what the other kids are doing. I have some dinosaurs in my bag. Cameron. See if your dinosaur matches. Does anyone have this dinosaur that matches? Be sure to allow enough time for planning, about 10 to 15 minutes. Make the planning experience fun by using interesting activities built around visibility games and tours, props, partnerships, group games, and representations. We match? Yeah. Cameron, where are you going to work today? Uh, in the black area. I wonder what you're going to use. My big and the big ones, too. Be sure to consider children's developmental levels when using these activities. Let's take a moment to look at these planning activities in more detail and how they can be used depending on children's developmental levels. Today for planning, you can get, uh, I'm going to give you a ticket. Why? And I you not did enough for that. It's not a police ticket, it's a ticket to get on my train. Visibility games and tours are concrete ways to show children the interest areas and materials and are ideal for younger children or children new to planning. Choo choo! Would anyone like to get off the train in the toy area? Joey, come tell me your plan today. I want to play on this. You want to play on that Lego table? Yeah. What are you going to use on that Lego table? I don't have a lot the Lego. Okay, let me give you a. I'll give you a stamp after you make a plan. Okay, Joe, you can get started. Are you ready to make a plan? Yes. I got a computer. Do something for the computer. You want to go help Ella with that computer? Yeah. Props are toys or easily made materials that can be used to help children share their plans. You're going to play on the other computer? Which number, Ella? Which number computer are you going to go with? Today for planning, I'm going to give you a phone and I'm going to have you plan with a partner. Do you know what that means? Cameron, you and Amaya could talk on the phone to each other and tell each listen to my words and tell each other your plans. Partnerships are when one child describes his or her plan to a partner. And the children then switch roles. Partnerships work best with older, experienced planners. The rocket ship? What are you going to use to make that rocket ship? The blocks. So you're going to go to the block area and make a rocket ship with the blocks. Is it going to be little blocks or big blocks? Both. Okay, you can go get started. Did you both make a plan? Group games are simple activities that help to determine whose turn it will be to plan next. Oh, DJ's dump truck! You want to play with Joshua and Meredith? They're using the farm animals. What do you think you could do with the farm animals today? You just want to play with them? I think Meredith is using magnet tiles. I wonder what you could build with magnet tiles for the farm animals. I want a house. How about a house? You want to go over and see what Josh and Meredith are up to? We'll find out. In representation activities, children express their plans by using symbols, photos, pantomime, drawings or writing, 
along with talking. That's a picture of Linus. Yeah. So you're going to go to the sand table and play with Linus. Representations stand for the areas, materials, or actions that children can plan to use. So you're going to go together mm -hmm. to the black area. Usually used with more experienced planners, representation activities encourage children to think about and describe their intentions more fully. play over by the hammers. So Cameron. Uh, we play here first. Cameron. Josh. Black area first. Black area first works for you too. Using a variety of planning activities not only helps keeps children's interest in the planning process, but also helps children develop cognitive skills as they think differently about how to share their ideas. So you've got that you're going to the block area, you're going to build a rocket ship. Now we need one more part of this plan. I'm wondering what... And then we're going to use dinosaurs. The, the di Remember, however, that planning activities are there to support children in making plans. They spur and keep children's interests, but it is the adults' interaction strategies that help children better form and express their plans. This says planning the book. This, the what? The bones. The dinosaurs with the skeletons? Yeah. Let's look and see in our planning book what area will you play in with the dinosaurs. Here's the train. Ella, you can go ahead and get started, and then we'll let Mingan decide where he wants to go. Planning should not be so elaborate that it becomes an end in itself. It should quickly lead to the child carrying out his or her plan. Done. You backed up and went into the toy area. What will you do in the toy area? Bella, can't you saw? Oh, you were tricking me. You are going to go back and finish building your tent. Yeah. Okay. Whatever planning activity you decide to use, be sure that it keeps the focus on the child's plan. I have a dice, and when it's your turn, you could roll the dice. For example, if you're using a die because the children were really interested in the dice you used yesterday, you might say to a child, roll the die and count the dots it lands on. Roll the dice. Oop. How many dots are there? Three. Tell me three things about your plan today. Keep in mind that children's planning skills will move from the simple and concrete to the more complex and abstract as they become familiar with the planning process. So your first area is the computer area. What are you going to do there? Okay, can you explain your plan to me, Meredith? Um, my plan is to play with Josh the Jack o Lantern. Mm hmm. And we're going to be this. Yes. So, so just what you're going to do with the blocks. As children become more confident in their ability to plan, their plans, with your support, will evolve and become more detailed. Children will begin to form mental images of activities that have not occurred yet and will be able to express their plan and add details without having to see what they will be playing with. Are you going to do one plan, two plans, or more plans? You can help young children with this process by asking not only where will you go, but also what will you do in that area? What materials will you use? And how will you get your plan started? I wonder what you'll do in the art area. Ella said she was going to paint on the easel today, so I'm wondering what you're going to do. I'm going to play with the Play-Doh. With the Play-Doh. You're going to do like a party like we did for small group yesterday, or are you going to do something different? I'm going to do something different. What do you think you'll do? Um, I'm going to make cookies. Some cookies. So you, do you need some tools to use with the cookies? Yeah. What, what will you use? For any given group of children, of course, you will have children at different developmental levels. Let's take a look at how one teacher structures planning time with children at varied levels. Do you, I heard you saying you want to do some building. So are you going to go to the block area do some building? Yeah. With the big blocks or the small blocks? <laughs> Kyle, you're going to use those blocks right there? Hold on, Mingdon. You can use those blocks. Here she comes. You're reaching. Keep going. No, right there. Right there. You're going to go to the water table? Yeah, I'm going to wash dino and then I'm going to go.
go over to the block area and build my 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 rock again, and then I'm going over to the block area to play with the puzzles. Okay, so first you're gonna go to the water table and wash your dino, <laughs> and then what was the second thing? Um, play in the block area. The block area and build a rocket ship. So what? And third was what, Cameron? Do you remember what she said? Yeah, we're going to do it. Which area was the third area? The book area to use those puzzles. Okay, you can go get started. Where are you going to go? To conclude the planning process, let children know they are free to begin work time once they've made a plan. They do not need to wait for the other children in the group to complete their plans. The Duplos, the Duplos are over in the toy area right here. So you're going to play with the Duplos? Are you going to use the motorcycles like you did yesterday and build something with the motorcycles? Okay, we're going to go to the toy area. All right, Ella. was to use these blocks and then you said to come on over and you're going to tell me what you're going to make. Work time, the do part of plan do review, is when children carry out their plans. You want to use some of those big blocks too. I remember that was in your plan also. During this time, children can work with any of the materials in any of the classroom interest areas. In other words, children decide where they will play, how they will play, and with whom they will play. Children use materials creatively at work time, repeating and building upon activities that interest them. There are no preset activities. Wow. Yeah. That round, rectangle, round, rectangle, round is a pattern. Children also may move materials from one area of the classroom to another. Make sure interest areas are easily accessible and contain a wide range of materials. So is the problem, are you worried that if she builds over by you it'll be too close to yours? Be sure not to limit the number of children who can work in each area. If an area gets crowded or demand for a particular piece of equipment or material is high, help the children use this as a problem-solving opportunity. Likewise, involve children in resolving any social conflicts that arise. There. Ella, where would you like to build it? Can you show us where you would like to have it? During work time, choose children to interact and play with. Observe silently first to make sure you do not intrude on or interrupt solitary or group play. Oh, it's just me. I'm one of the three little pigs. I'm off to build a house. so I can make a house out of straw. Find out what children are doing. So you're going to be a cheetah in a stall, and you want Meredith to knock on your door and play with you? Yeah, right, Meredith. Observe their social interactions, specific types of play, and learning through play. Maybe we have the reset. Maybe we can go outside. After recall, you think we can go outside? Yeah. Participate as partners in children's play, assuming roles suggested by the children, following their cues about the content and direction of play, and conversing with them in a give and take manner. I'm be very hungry. Hey, look at that. What's that? <gasps> Is that a squirrel? There's not a sticky, there's not a sticky part on here, Amaya. We'll need to use something else. We could use tape. Encourage children to explore and use materials in their own way. Oh, you're going to use glue and tape. Support children when they choose to repeat an activity and put them in control of evaluating their own work and efforts. I've never seen a suit on a dinosaur before. How did you get that idea? How did you get that idea to put a suit on a dinosaur? I cut some paper that was just like this size, put it around him, put tape on, and then put more tape on to stick the dinosaurs on. But I put glue on the dinosaurs, so they would stick on the tape, uh -huh. and the tape would stick on him. Wow. Do you think that's going to connect it? Scaffold learning by first taking the time to understand and support children's current level of exploration and understanding.
then encourage and challenge children to extend their thinking only when they are ready. So what do we need to make that connect? Some more blocks. Let's get some more blocks. Except that young children can quickly change their original plans during work time. In fact, children often do that as they carry out their ideas or get interested in what someone else is doing. Do you want to make it just like Mingan's? See what he's using? Maybe Mingan could help you, Cameron. If they do, follow up with them and help them express a new plan. Sometimes they may want to replan, sharing their new plan with an adult. Joshua, what's your new plan? You're thinking about it still? If children complete their initial plan, encourage them to come up with a next plan to continue their work time activity. Okay, Josh, what are we gonna what are we looking for? This is a useful strategy to use with children who may need support in getting refocused on their play. Magnetiles. I remember yesterday you were using the trains. No. Let's see, there's marble works. Record your observations of children, what they do and say, so you can use this information for their assessment as well as for future planning. Finally, bring work time to an end by giving a transition warning. Stop your bodies, look around and start putting your toys away. It's time to clean up the room. Cleanup time, which is at the end of work time and lasts about 10 minutes, helps children learn the organization of the classroom and the locations of specific materials. See the basket with the necklaces on it? That tells us the necklaces go in there. Children and adults work together to return materials and equipment to their storage spaces. There's more to clean up. And, when appropriate, put away or find display space for children's personal creations. I can't take them off. They're still yeah. wet. The They're still wet on the bottom. We'll let them dry a little bit more. They may choose to put a work in progress sign on something they plan to continue with the next day. There. Okay, be careful, it's a big load, wide load. It's important to remember to keep a light and playful attitude during cleanup time. Accept children's levels of involvement and skill while supporting their learning. Well, it looks like the dump trucks are being used. Would you like a bucket? Okay, you know where that goes. That goes in the trash. Three things in the bucket. Come on over here, let's see what we can find. During cleanup time, offer fun and engaging ways for children to put away their materials. Some ideas for cleanup time include giving children a small bucket or bag to collect things that need to be put away. Take it over and put it away now. Playing I Spy. I spy with my little eye. Something that you cover up with in bed. A blanket, let's go put that blanket away. And playing instrumental music while cleaning up. Yeah, Amaya, come tell us about what you did at work time. Recall time, which immediately follows the work time, cleanup time sequence, brings closure to the plan, do, review process. Did you have animals at your farm? I wonder what kind of animals. I had a pig and a sheep and a bunny and a bird and a cow. In their small groups, adults encourage children to reflect on, talk about, and or show what they have done at work time. When children recall, they discover that they can make things happen, learn new things, and solve their own problems. It must have been a big farm. Yeah. Yeah. Here's how to support children at recall time. First, meet back in the same group that children planned in. Each group has its own adult. I saw Linus playing in the book area at the computer. Linus, Linus, look. Let's make a stamp for Linus in the book area. This tells us how many kids played in the book area today. Meredith, DJ said you played in the block area today. Make recall a group process. When you ask a child about what he or she did, 
others are thinking, that is recalling, what they saw that child do too. My nephew did play, played in the block area. I remember. What do you remember her doing in the block area? They too can join in on the conversation, helping that child recall. I was playing in with the paint. Yeah, what color paint did you make? Pink. Pink. And I remember, Amaya, you helped her to know how to make that pink. Do you remember how you did it? Listen to and support children as they share what they did at work time. Ask open-ended questions and comment on what you saw them doing. Lots of kids worked in the art area today. Let's think about the areas that you went to. Take your time. Children should be able to recall without feeling pressured or rushed. You, therefore, may not be able to recall with every child every day. Assure those that do not get a chance that they will be the first to recall the next day. Mm -hmm. Over there. Five, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, Brianna, go find Joey. Let Brianna, let Brianna. Keep recall time fun and interesting through activities similar to those used during planning time. Tell us about what you did today. Including visibility games and tours. What did you do today? Props, partnerships, group games, and representations. Support the recall process by encouraging children to recall in ways that are consistent with their development, just as during planning time. And table and the block area. Come tell us about what you did today, Ella. I played with the block when they didn't want to play. For young preschoolers and children new to recall, visibility games and tours are concrete ways to remind children of the interest areas and materials that they may have used during work time. Oh, let's, In the uh, block area. In the block. Come on. Come on over, Mingan. Children may use props as pointers or to indicate whose turn it is. You use the farm animals and the big and small blocks. You made that thing in the block area, yeah, didn't you? But, but it kept falling. It kept falling, and we had to figure out how to fix that. So if you're wearing this, you can pretend that you're the teacher. Let's ask Josh to be the teacher. Partnerships occur when one child recalls while another child, or several children, listen. You're going to be the teacher, and you're going to ask David about what he did today. You could... Partnerships often require children to recall more abstractly, as they must be able to hold a mental image in their mind. What did DJ do today, teacher? What did DJ do today? He played cars with you and Cameron? I remember yesterday, we sang with the hula hoop and sang a song. Today, I have a ooh, hot bean bag. Group games keep children interested while they wait for their turn and are useful for deciding whose turn it is to recall next. I played, I was at home. I played in the, uh, with the dinosaurs and I played in the house. Mingan, you played with those dinosaurs with, with uh, Cameron, didn't you? Over here. over here. So you started book on this side and then you did area over here. Are you going to do house? Because you've got a house here. You want to do house area? Representation activities encourage children to depict their work time experiences through drawings, models, objects, writing, gesture, and so on. There's an O. Such activities require children to think abstractly, and thus they should be used with older children or children who are comfortable with recalling. Roll the dice. How many? How many nuts on top? One, two, three. Tell me three things about what you did today. Whatever recall activity you decide to use, be sure that it connects directly to what the child did. For example, if you're using a die as a prop for recall time, you might say, roll the die and count the dots it lands on. It landed on a three. Tell me three things about what you did during work time. Tell me something about the cheetah. 
I want to, I am captured with those little things. You got captured with those little straps? Oh, the arches. Who captured you? When using these recall activities, keep them simple and remember the goal of using them to support the children as they talk about their work time experiences. Younger preschoolers often recall the last thing they did, since it's the freshest in their minds. Cameron, did you go to the book area first this morning? Think about your plan. I was at the book area when it was time to go to bed. Oh, that was one of the last places you went. Where did you go first? Number one is what you did first today. Can you remember? With experience, recall expands children's consciousness beyond the present, so they can begin to think farther back in the recent past as well as in sequence. Your recall strategies, therefore, will need to reflect this change. No, you just watched him play the computer. So this is this is Joshua's day. He went first to the block area to play with Cameron, then to the water table, and then he watched David. That's One, two. Yeah, this two because I changed my mind. I didn't want to go there. Older preschoolers are more able to recall the sequence of what they did at work time, or they may even recall how they completed their original plans. For these children, you can use strategies that encourage them to recall their work time experiences in more complex ways. Table and watch dino. Then you went to the black area and did what? Made a rocket. Rocket. And then you went to the art area and did what? Made, made stuff from areas. So you went to one, two, three areas. You do, Cameron? Because my dog is at my uncle's house. Oh, that's right. You told us that yesterday. Remember, too, that you can recall with children beyond recall time, such as after they do something at work or group times, to extend their reflections on all parts of their day's activities. A pickle? A spaghetti? His mouth was made of spaghetti, spaghetti, spaghetti. His mouth was made of spaghetti and his name was Aiken Joey. In this program, you have seen how High Scope's three-part sequence of plan, do, review adds structure and a purpose to a preschooler's day. During plan, do, review, children make choices. Yeah. What was your idea, Meredith? Mm -hmm. My idea is to go get started. Oh, you're done. Act on those choices and reflect on them while adults support them in their decision making. These experiences give preschoolers lifelong valuable skills that enable them to act thoughtfully and learn from their experiences as they become older children and young adults. Now, are you ready to plan, do, review? on that. I, I think it was very valuable, um, some of the information that we were learning. Um, what I'd like to do now is take a little bit of time to discuss some of the takeaways from today. So um, can we get started on that before we move into um, life skills and listening? Anyone want to volunteer to share a little bit um, what was most um, impressive or um, useful? I'll chime in again without a screen, sorry. No problem, uh, thanks Mark. Yeah, that was a lot of information. And I think, you know, from the face perspective, the center base perspective, the of course, the classroom time with the kids and the interactions for as new as our program is, um, you know, I felt pretty, pretty confident and pretty, uh, I don't know, for as new as our program is, I, I thought we had it going, you know, when we were in person and, you know, we had all the components in place. Right. 
you know, for as new as we all were in this program, I thought, you know, again, speaking for Miss Pearl and I, since that's kind of who we had going in there, um, I thought we were doing pretty good job from what I just observed. Uh, the prompts, the organization, you know, giving the kids their choice, um, you know, the, the wall, you know, scheduling, you know, the kids had a lot of visual, visual support in the classroom. Um, we had plenty of choices for them for sure, set up, uh, giving them time to work with one another, problem solving. You know, of course, there's going to be drama with the little ones. And I, I just, I thought we were doing a pretty good job. Um, you know, we were clicking there. Just unfortunate that COVID hit and, you know, we are where we are right now. Right. How do you see that um, picking up when you get back to that? Do you feel that you'll be able to pick right back up or you will have to bring in, you know, kind of reinstate some of the... Oh, of course. Yeah, we'll need... Because again, what a lot of these kids are probably lacking are the, the social skills. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully not. Uh, prove us wrong. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there will be some, some hurdles that we'll need to overcome. Um, and again, it probably comes back to where or what they've accomplished at home. And it's pretty obvious, you know, those parents who are more involved and those kids that have continued to, you know, do it basically what we recommend. I'm not going to say what we, what we tell them to do, but what we recommend, uh, you know, the evidence we've seen, the feedback we've gotten. Uh, I, I think, again, we'll have the, the good and the not so positive moving forward yeah absolutely yeah it will be it'll it will be different um and you know the thing is is that no one wants to go backwards but um the the research that is being um you know developed through this um you know the 2020 um era has is, is proven that um, it will be very important to reestablish the social aspect of it and to make sure that you develop new strategies and making sure that um, you know the planning is taking place to empower young students. Thank you so much Mark. For I'll, I'll say one more real quick. I think the students that we did have you know that half dozen or so you know who were who are our most solid students. Um, I think they're off to a great start, you know, in kindergarten this year and beyond because of what was in place, you know, pre-COVID. Very nice, good job, job well done. Okay, um, anyone else comment, um, takeaways? Good morning, Kim. Uh -huh. um, good Pearl. morning. Good morning. Um, it was very interesting watching the video, you know, I, you know, um, I felt like, just like Mark said, we were, we're doing some of these things in right. our classroom, um, you know, before COVID and, um, you know, on the, the three, the three areas that they're talking about plan, do review, and, um, we do plan, um, and then, um, on the do, that's what we call work in Wondershare. And then review, we do um, circle time debriefing. So that, so that was good. And I saw that. And um, the part that I think, you know, um, I feel like uh, we need to do more work in is the um, rep representation and, you know, like, um, writing it, writing, you know, we do all of that, but, you know, just for the kids to write it down or draw it, mm -hmm. plan, I think, and that's the part that I think we need to work on that once we get back into the class. I think that is important. You know, they get to see the, um, you know, how that 
how they have that strip where sin, each different centers they have. Right, yes. Um, you know, they can see the drawing and then they can see the writing so they can make that connection. So I think that is important. And for them to um, actually see their thinking on, on paper, I think that that was, you know, my takeaway was, you know, I like to try that. Absolutely. And, and it did give that um, strong empowerment for the student to actually see um, what they had accomplished, you know, which is a great building block for the, you know, going into the first grade, they'll be able to take that particular skill. Um, you know, I, I, I must agree with you, um, Mark, I think in preschool, there's, there's only um, certain developmental um, objectives that you do have that uh, will apply to all um, students. And, um, you know, I don't think pre-K and learning, et cetera, is um, something where you can reinvent the wheel. I believe that there are just certain standards that have to be in place. Um, the goal that I have as far as, you know, for global minded students is to be able to really um, develop skills that are life skills. And um, that's what I really enjoy that, um, that I see as far as really implementing these strategies and using them in words that the young kids can take away um, with that. One, one issue that I did have um, with, you know, like with individual kids that might start off at one level that perhaps in a private school um, that, you know, they learn certain ways, activities that are only pertinent to that particular school. Well, it really, some, I, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm beware of that because if in fact they, those skills are not applicable and to be scaffolded on, if that student has to leave that particular environment, it can be devastating for a student. So I like the idea of using practical words, practical skills, practical um, hands-on activities that they can build upon that won't be so devastating, um, you know, if they go to the next level, you know, it's, it's very important. I think that um, you mentioned um, Pearl that you you called something, was it Wonderland? What did you refer to that as? Work and Wondershare. Yeah, <laughs> work and Wondershare. So with that, you know, um, I, I do appreciate, I think it's a very catchy title and catchy slogan or whatever. Um, but what I, from my experience that I've seen where it becomes very difficult when a student is unable to identify what that particular item is in that environment, if they were to ever change and go out of a certain district. So um, that has just been something that um, from my experience, but yeah, I, I think that using real, terms, life skills that are applicable um, as they matriculate on and on. Thank you so much for sharing as well. Uh, Ms. Benelli, I do see that you're there as well. Um, good morning. Maybe she doesn't have her mic on, let's see. Okay, um, Michelle, you wanna chime in? Anything that you see that you wanted to share? Yeah, well, um, again, with the, with the uh, plan do review, I think, um, again, as um, watching it as a whole, what stuck out for me was um, as you um, kind of, of course you have them plan and do, but you're uh, reiterating with the recall, making them remember. And I liked that they had the, uh, the teaching block or like you said, it was a visual and they put the clips on it, uh, differentiating what they actually did. And um, I just thought that was um, very powerful. And that's something that will help them to know that at the end of the activities, I have to, <laughs> uh, I have to designate or explain what I did. Yes. Which is important. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And um, accountability that really does um, breed that in accountability, which again is a life skill that um, we, we do have to be accountable. We have to be responsible for our actions and reactions. Thank you so much for sharing on that. Um, I know we are we've gotten through a lot of information, but I do want to move into the next portion of listening. And um, this is part of the actual process that we are gaining this um, strategy of building blocks for ourselves during this particular professional development session. And this is, um, the first lesson on listening. Um, with this, we will, um, we'll get as far as we can. If we don't finish up, we can certainly do it the next time as well, because I don't want to rush through this wonderful information as well. But the goals will be to um, make sure that um, we are addressing the standards that are within your school and implementing those into the actual lessons. Students will practice um, the skills of taking turns, listening to others, and speaking clearly. Students will use effective communication skills. And so as you can see, we're using the type of verbiage here that they will be familiar with throughout their education. And so I think it's important to adapt those um, words that are universal and very relatable to real life skills. Um, we will be through this these sessions, we're going through the listening, um, self-control, developing empathy, cooperating and resolving conflict, gaining and giving respect, developing integrity, creating positive attitude, understanding fairness, um, working as teams, learning positive coping skills. That's going to be very, very important for re-entering into the classroom, being responsible. We worked on that last week and building good friendship. So these are some of the tools that we will be learning through the next several weeks. And um, I think that they will be very um, useful in the classroom. So the objectives will be, again, basically we're learning new strategies to uh, for listening, um, that listening enables you to better understand the meaning. So we need to make sure that we are stressing this to our students at whatever age to just um, reflect back on why is it important to listen and giving them opportunities to share um, from their aspect. Also, students will understand that listening is different than hearing. Wow, that's a big concept for, for young learners to understand the difference between that. You know, um, it is a big difference, but sometimes we don't make a differentiation between that. Um, students will understand that listening requires mental concentration. What does that look like for kids from a child's perspective? How can we make that into a visual that um, when we listen, we have to have this mental com um, concentration? So um, again, in keeping with the same topic and the theories, um, typical materials that um, you can use, of course, um, board and chart paper, um, markers, and you know, you're gonna make sure you're putting information on I do and stressing the information about the I do. Listening and interview, we're gonna show you how to do a listening interview and uh, making sure that um, students are understanding um, what that mean, means. What is an interview? Does, is, that a, is that an appropriate word for uh, a young child to learn in preschool or kindergarten? Um, it can be a new word and it is a life skill word that they need to be aware of. Interviewing is another way of getting to know someone. So, you know, teaching them um, the high end of um, new words and new vocabularies and then breaking them down into how you do. And we'll be learning some of the best ways to listen and learn is through doing the practical teaching and understanding of an interview. So listening, 
that is where we're going to start. Um, I do have some other information that I want to share, um, but just because of time, um, we might have to come back to this particular area um, of how to get your kids to listen and engage. This is a short TED talk um, from an expert that really helps us to engage. And we'll come back to, to this. Um, I wanna go through more of the practical portions and the tools and some of the information that will be very beneficial for you. So one of the activities to listening is the experience of teaching our students to use whole body listening. And I do have a packet of um, activities um, that I will get to you as well, but this is part of um, what, you know, what is in the actual um, packet. And it has to do with utilizing how we truly listen. So this could be two and one, of course. First of all, making a picture of whatever the student, um, a self portrait, if you would, or they can, you know, use a standard um, girl character or boy character, and then fill in the information that characterizes all the different parts of the body. Um, Michelle, can you see these uh, clear enough to just kind of go through those and share what those areas are? Yes, I can. Thank so you. Um, yeah, um, at the bottom it says the listener, which is Liza, and um, at the top, it says eyes are looking at speaker. Oops, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, I like mouth is quiet. Um, let's see, the top, not sure, was brain thinking about what is being said. Ears are open and listening. Heart is caring. Hands and arms are calm and still. Legs and feet are calm and still. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, so these are some of the, the prompts that um, you can instill in young kids in order that they can start understanding that we don't only listen with our ears, we also listen with our brain, our eyes, our mouth, our heart, our hands, legs, and feet. And so this is a way of implementing different areas and or different activities to instill the types of listening and how we learn to listen. Um, I know last week, I'm not sure which um, which one of our um, guests mentioned that um, really looking forward to finding out ways of um, teaching listening. And so, you know, finding um, different activities of what we'll be going through today. And um, I have a short little song as well that can be implemented into the teaching of this for, for young kids as well. And I will come back to that as well. I want to go through more of the basic information. Um, so of course, with all of the information, we need to make sure we start in any of our lesson with Gary gathering information. Michelle, can you read this part as far as um, a good way of starting a three minute start for a listening project? Sure. Um... Gather your students and tell them, I'm going to show you what being a good listener and what being a bad listener looks like. Then ask your students, who wants to tell me something fun they did next week? Call on a student and as he or she starts to talk, listen and make good eye contact. Next call on another student and as the student talks, Look around the room, get up from your chair and turn your back on the student. Ask the student how he or she felt when you were being a bad listener. <laughs> Tell the class, good students and good friends are good listeners. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I really like that. As I said, these are just some starters that you can, you know, use in your classroom, even you can use them on, you know, remote level, um, you know, uh, 
virtual situation as well, but um, we need to learn to kind of program this sense of learning how to listen, understanding what the difference is, you know, good or bad listener. You know, I think with regard to, as we grow, learning to be good friends and establishing relationships are very important as a life lesson and being able to um, start this as at a young age to teach and um, to allow students to understand what that looks like um, as you know is very important to implement on a daily basis as far as making sure we're listening listening well all right, so that is one idea for one of the starters. Um, here is a little bit more um, concentrated 10 minute starter that um, can be utilized as well. And this is looking into the I do um, situation as we learned earlier. And Michelle, if you don't mind, if you can go through these and then we can learn a little bit more. And keep in mind, this is focusing on also the whole body listening chart. Okay, sure. The first one is explain to your students, today we're going to learn to listen with our whole bodies, from the top of our heads to the bottom of our feet. Then create an anchor chart to illustrate the characteristics of whole body listening and review the chart with your students explaining and modeling each action, which, which I think we just went over a moment ago. Next bullet point is head, brain. It's thinking about what's being said. Eyes, they're looking at the person who is speaking. Ears hear what people are saying. And if you're deaf, you listen with your eyes using sign language and lip reading. Mouths stay closed. Hearts care about what's being said and hands and feet are still. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. I really do like um, this illustration as far as, you know, just kind of pointing these things out. Uh, they're reminders, um, good reminders for anyone, <laughs> any age, you know. Um, I know even as adult people, we forget how to listen sometimes. Um, as teachers, sometimes we forget how to truly listen and to uh, truly understand what our what the needs are for our students. So this is a good way to start and as a reminder for a class ex, um, exercise that takes about 10 minutes to go through. Really get the students involved and um, get them more aware of what I do and making sure and um, including that as far as a project, maybe having this as a game as well, where you can do some pantomime type of um, gestures and or um, utilizing that as a game as well. So keep those in mind as well. So the next one, um, we're kind of gearing up with some more um, aspects of um, guided student practice of what we do. So the first one was I do, now it's we do. So more of a group activity as we um, kind of discussed earlier, um, some of the ways that we're all familiar with keeping kids busy in the classroom, but this is more of a we do. Michelle, can you take over on that one? Sure. Uh, lead your class through a game of Simon Says where students perform the motions or actions you suggest them, but only if they are a part of Simon Says sentence. And secondly, for example, you could say Simon Says jump. Simon Says raise your right hand. And Simon Says take one step forward, but be certain to occasionally leave off the Simon Says to see just how closely your class is listening. Absolutely. So um, this is a very familiar um, game that has been around since 
yeah, long, long, long time, decades. And um, we know that it still is effective and it still is something that helps us to teach that learning style and, and the learning standards and listening standards. So um, you can utilize this as the typical body movements, et cetera, but you can also incorporate the same style as um, you know, the student matriculates into the higher levels and level grades into um, perhaps a, a, a math using Simon said math um, or English or words or vocabulary and just implement those as well. But the basic starting block, as we all know, as an exercise is always a good listening tool for the younger um, learners would be this age old Simon said type. You can even change the name, of course. I'm not sure if many of you might do that, but making it a little bit more um, group friendly or team centered where you can choose teams and um, have maybe the captain of the team or the leader of the team, it'd be their name instead of Simon says. So making it a little bit more personal and it really will improve that self-esteem of leadership in the classroom and just kind of rotate doing that. I think kids look forward to being um, looked, as, looked upon as a leader. Okay, then there's another one that is, and we won't go through all of these, but maybe just a couple, Michelle, um, on student independent practice of you do. And these, as you can see, the time is stretching out a little bit more into 30 minutes here, but um, perhaps you can just select a couple of them, Michelle, and read through just because of short being short on time. Michelle, is your mic on? Thank you, sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start with the first one. Tell students that they're going to practice listening by interviewing their classmates. Explain that when you interview a person, you ask the person questions to find out information about them. So bullet point two, tell them you're going to go around the room and interview classmates and find out who loves broccoli and who doesn't feel strongly about broccoli and who hates broccoli. When, you're, when you are the interviewer, you're going to ask, do you like broccoli? The person being interviewed can answer only once by saying the word broccoli. If you're being interviewed, when you answer the question, you must use your tone to show how you feel about the broccoli. When you are the interviewer, you're going to ask, do you like broccoli? Uh, let me yeah. see. Okay, this. yeah, uh, you know, as I said, we can go on a little bit more on this, but I think everyone understands the, the, the gist of what this will be working on and addressing as far as student independent practice. So again, this is something that can really be done um, in a classroom where there might be a selected pair that would interview one and the other. And then you just kind of rotate um, throughout the, the classroom. It gives students an opportunity, one, to get to know each other. Um, another is that you can have students to also develop the interview questions of likes, dislikes, and then making sure that the students do have an opportunity to share their ideas and making sure their, um, their comments or interview questions are part of the actual interview process. And then I do have a, a, a chart that we will show you um, on how to connect um, or conduct an interview. All right, one more here. When we're kind of winding down as far as an exercise of foreclosure, how about this one, Michelle? Sure. Have members of the class share their findings then say, raise your hand if you found, and you say the student's name, loved, didn't feel strongly about, or hated broccoli. For each student, the whole class should have the same response. Remind students that they were able to figure out someone's preference based on the way 
they heard a single word. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, you can utilize this as far as the tones, um, sounds, making sure that, you know, um, students are, if they really don't like it, encourage them to make, you know, the yuck sound or those type of things, because of course, kids love to do things that are disgusting, etc. So this is sometimes a fun activity that they can really express themselves and get really engaged in this closure portion of it. So um, the next Next, as far as questions for assessment, is making sure that we are asking those good questions again. Um, we see real, you know, three simple questions here. Why is it important to listen with your whole body? You know, that's a strong one that um, we need to really utilize and bring into the teaching environment because most of us don't really understand that this process of listening um, is using the whole body. Of course, we use our body language, we make facial expressions, we shrug our shoulders when we don't like something, um, when we're proud, we can, you know, make um, different, you know, signs that are expressing our body and this through our body language. This is something that is also a life skill that needs to be brought into focus for kids to be aware of. Um, the next one, what are things you can do to be a better listener? You know, those are always some standards that we, we're all looking to improve ourselves. And so this could be an exercise as well. Um, what does it look like when someone is listening to you, you know, and you can then have this opportunity for students to come up and make certain assessments as well throughout this listening process. Now, as of last week, we also went through several different um, learn lesson extensions. And again, we have several that um, we want to address on how you can make these activities um, you know, right there in your classroom. And um, the first one is um, art. We'll just go through a few of them um, basically because of time, but I will give you the information on each one of these. So you'll have um, this to, to actually utilize um, in the class. Michelle, can you read this one about art extension? Sure. Ask students to identify a sound that they regularly hear. So for example, we have car driving, bird chirping, the wind blowing, planes flying. Once children have identified the sound, ask them to draw the thing that makes the sound. You can choose to place all of the drawings on the bulletin board labeled sounds of the world. Very nice, thank you. So again, this could be a typical um, activity to just kind of reinforce um, what was pointed out earlier. Um, I think it was Miss Pearl that may have said that, you know, kind of putting some of this writing into action. This could be a way of making one of those charts that we, um, we took a look at earlier and um, identifying um, these different sounds. And then that could be a way to incorporate that as far as um, one of the art lessons. Um, the main lesson um, extensions have to do with art, drama, culture, and of course, physical or PE, um, physical activities are all part of these lessons. So um, as you can see, each one of these, and I do have an illustration that I'll show you here with um, part of one of those good old fashioned um, um, paper color um, worksheets that you can use. Um, tell the student that they will be making um, a listening ear, ears headband and um, they will be able to color this and make some large bunny ears. And now, you know, that's something that we always do, but for the younger kids, you know, as far as, you know, using these large ears as a sign of really the way that we listen and listening well, but this could be a wonderful activity and you make the ears into a headband. And of course, I have this information that I'll show, um, show you a little later. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through um, the, the extensions and then we can go through um, 
how to do these a little later. Um, draw um, Drama extensions, those are always fun with role playing. Um, those kids kind of like, either, either kids really like the role play um, or, or there's the shy ones that don't really care about it too much. Um, the literature extension, um, I have a wonderful little, um, little video here that um, it's funny, it's become very popular here um, with my new grandson <laughs> as far as he just loves this and it, you know, it reflects a story and then um, you ask questions of what happened to Howard and how he really listened. But this is really something fun that um, you will have access to as well. And then of course, um, that famous PE extension have students play they, that good old fashioned game that kids love, red light, green light, and then um, ask students how listening is important to playing this particular game. And then again, we see this um, listening chart that we're very, very familiar with. And um, you know, you can utilize this once again. Um, last week, we talked about this particular um, fable um, of the good old story of the ant and the grasshopper. And um, I have um, another little portal of information that I wanted to share with you, but um, we'll, we'll get into that um, on our next, um, our next um, class of training. So we talked about this interview and the interview process. And so this is the actual chart that um, you can use. And I do ha have um, these activity sheets that I will share with you as well. As far as, you know, when you're going through this particular listening activity, um, this is the chart that you can have um, the students go through um, for the listening interview. There, here are those famous listening ears that um, I mentioned that you can, of course, have um, the students create these, color them as they would like, and um, then you would just put a band around the back and then you make it into a headband and then you could use that as an activity as well. So, wow, we got right through this, but I have some of the, the other information that we'll pick up on next week and start off with to make sure you get all of the information that's needed. So, um, because of time, I think we are kind of out of out of it. Um, thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions or comments before we leave? I just wanted to iterate. I really like the um, for the listening, the the visual of having the children make the headbands with the the rabbit ears. <laughs> they really enjoy that. <laughs> Yeah, they really do. And then, you know, you could just, um, of course, they can put those on headbands as well. You know, um, I remember, you know, I mean, you can use this with any, any animal, of course, that, um, you know, that wants to focus on the ears, but we always do with the rabbits as well. So um, again, not to keep you from your, your busy Friday, most often you guys have other things that you need to accomplish. I will um, go ahead and end today. Um, please leave comments, um, suggestions, whichever in the um, chat box, I will leave that up. And um, until next time, um, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you and hearing back from you. Anyone, anyone else have any questions before we get out of here? Just can you clarify a little bit, please, to Ms. Benali? Um, on the adult ed, maybe once we get a calendar going, what your intentions are? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've um, been trying to get in contact with Miss Benali to go over it, but um, I will. She, she's she been quite busy, but I will definitely do that because I feel that um, we do need to address that. Um, I did send it to her in writing as far as the proposal, but oh. um, yes, I will follow up as well on that um, with her as soon as she has some time to work with me on that. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And um, I will see you next week. Yes.
Bye. Bye. Eagles? Yes. I was just going to comment on, um, I was in here with one of the um, teachers and we were talking about like part of what you were showing where the students were reflecting. And that's something that I know the FACE program does a lot of where they have the kids in the classroom or when there's in-person learning. And um, I know currently, you know, we're trying our best on our end to um, find a vendor that could make our in-person learning happen or to be more safer. So that's something that we're trying, or at least up at the essential staff level. But um, it would be nice to see that model happen again because um, I can see a lot of, you know, just even being, um, you know, in a graduate program, I think the biggest thing I've learned from my second master's was that we did so much reflection work, you know, yes. reflecting on your reading, reflecting on your practice, reflecting on your application. And I think for us here, even our culture, culturally, we're just not reflective people. We can look and look and say, oh, criticize, criticize, you know, that's wrong, that's wrong. But what about us as practitioners? You know, like where, but then it starts like what we saw with the little child on the, on the, um, you know, he was, I forgot, oh, she was telling, like, she was talking about where, what station did you go to? Right. And then all the other kiddos can help that child remember too. But then I saw that part where, you know, she was trying to walk the kid through his plan and what he had said he was going to do. She had to do reminders with him. And I think that was really, you know, that's something that, you know, if we can instill that in our kiddos, it's going to be so much easier to have self-reflection occur um, with, you know, us with, when they grow into like the older stages in the um, classroom, they're always going to reflect back on, okay, looking at my paper, it's not nobody's fault, you know, like I can do better, but how do I do better? You know, instead of putting themselves down because they got a bad grade or, you know, you know, making it somebody else's fault. And yes. so I really like that part on how, you know, reflection is important, especially for what they're doing in play. And I thought that was really neat. And then it, it brought me back because I was talking to the teacher in here. I was like, you know, we were talking about like pack time in face, you know, that's something that our students are able to do with their parent. And I think that's important to teach the parent, like, you know, hey, talk your kid through what just happened. What was their plan? How did they live? How did they um, make that plan happen? And then let's reflect on it, you know? And I mean, even as adults, you know, we have a plan, but we never execute it sometimes. And then, so how do we build that kind of innate um, planning, execution, reflection? How do we build that? And it could start with our little ones, you know, in, in, in the classroom. As simple as planning out what they're gonna do and having them finish it out and then reflecting on it. Like, man, we'd have better learners in our classroom that would be more reflective. And then once you have that reflection happening, you can, you can have constructive criticism that will, you know, it, it's not like you're criticizing them, but they'll take it constructively and say, okay, I got this, now I can build it better. So I really like that part on the video when I seen the, the kid, I think, I think he was building something and the, the caretaker or the teacher was sitting there talking him through the plan. Right. So that was me. Yeah, it's really that um, that partnering. And I really thank you so much for sharing that, because um, it, it's really important to to be, you know, on point with um, really seeing the, the, the whole purpose of of this and why it's truly important. You know, as as Mark pointed out before, it's like, yeah, most of the things that do take place in preschool are pretty standard as far as, mm -hmm. you know, what what we allow students in that developmental stage, but it's up to us in this 21st century to take it to the next mm -hmm. level and really bringing out those practical skills that are the foundation. I mean, can you imagine, just like you said, if students learn, first of all, that we're responsible for the outcomes of our plan and mm -hmm. 
follow through, then if they're learning that at, a, at an age, they're going to be holding themselves accountable, but others as well. And it's not necessarily as, you know, we, we have to, we have to move beyond um, the pointing the finger and criticizing, just like you said, we have to empower each other. And I think by um, even, even, you know, as in your graduate program, I'm quite sure you're, you know, the, the, the team participation that is so valuable to be able to learn to work with each other, not to put each other down, but to bring and build each other up. And um, with this planning process, I think it is so positive and it is so needed. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you, you, you see that as a positive note. I thought that was very important to bring that in. And it also builds on to that next part um, of from last week of the importance of responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about responsibility and we want our, our students to be responsible, but where do we give them the tools of how to do that? You know, we can't just keep them as, you know, you're just a little kid. I mean, of course they are, but you know, they they respect you as and take what you're saying on mm -hmm. if it's favorable, and then also if it's building, it's building and it's motivating them, and it's just um, as I, I just go back to really empowering them and. It, when they make their own plan and they realize that they're responsible for it and then as team members can help them you know sometimes you know and especially in a multi or um, grade level you know this is where the older or the more developed students can can help and to, to build this camaraderie and again that social st skill that is going to really be needed so I'm really hoping that you'll really include that um, into your your lessons and start this now you can even start it um, now with some of building some of these the props that are needed so mm -hmm. thank you again cool and I like that word camaraderie because it, it really it that's you know it's constructive but it's a cohesive group that needs to come together. So that makes sense. Absolutely. Like you're behind one another to build upwards. Yeah, absolutely. So it is, um, it, it's just really developing these life lessons. I mean, really, even the young kids look at that, how that can be um, a mirror for the, the adults even. You know, when they're seeing the young people um, incorporate these new skills, of course, you know, parents are going to take take notice as well and build this same structure in the household as well. So that's that's exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So we'll move on more with um, this style. Um, as I had mentioned with Mark, um, I would like to um, have a session perhaps on Mondays you know, where we can specifically address more of the adult education. And I'm not sure if this is the time to discuss that with you, Ms. Benelli, but. Um, you can, we can, we can discuss that now because I was just gonna announce to the face group that we're gonna have our team meeting. Okay. Uh, but we could discuss this first and then after that we can jump on the face link because we haven't had our face team meeting yet. Okay, that'll be great. So what we'll do now is, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and close out um, and then, um, you know, say adieu until next time. And then Ms. Benali, if you want to stay on, we can go ahead and, or do you, would you prefer me calling you back later? Oh no, this is fine. We can okay. do it that way. I, I, I was just about to send you the dates you wanted to. Okay, yeah, sign me those as well, but I'll, I'll let everyone else go because I know you might need a break. It's been a, a bit. Michelle, thank you so much, and um, I will see everyone else um, at our next meeting. Look for your email for the time and um, the topics. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you.